Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Dead Man Walking in the 15 minute pool on ICC. So, Dead Man Walking is 2124 and peak rating of 2185. I guess we're going to have an Imzu Indian in this game. I never understood why people play anything but bishop b4 here, but occasionally you see d5 or c5. Yeah, so he does that. Let's play queen c2. This is my favorite weapon against the Nimzo. I have a real tough time against the Nimzo, as does virtually every other d4 player on the planet. <laughs> I don't know of anyone who is like, yeah, I don't mind playing against the Nimzo. I have a great weapon against it. Um, everyone seems to have their struggles against this opening. Okay, I'm going to play knight f3 here. This is a flexible move. a3 is more normal, but I played knight f3 before, basically with equal frequency, and um, I like it. Yeah, b6. Okay, so there's a couple things that can happen here. I could play e4. e4 is the principled move, but I kind of like g3. I honestly think I like g3 a little bit more, more than um, e4. What they can do is play bishop a6 in this position, but most people don't. Yeah, they usually play exactly what he just played, bishop b7. I had an OTB game in this line um, in, I want to say November, I think. And it turned out well for me. Um, C5 is interesting. Yeah, I'll probably take it. Yeah, because if I castle, he can take on D4, and then I have to take with my knight. And if he swaps the light square bishops, as a rule, he's pretty much okay. This is a valuable minor piece for me. So let's take on, on C5. I expect him to take with a bishop. He does. Uh, let's castle. And I think he should play knight c6. After which I'll probably go rook d1, or at least I'll think about rook d1. So dead man walking. This guy's five minute rating is uh, 2226, so he seems pretty good in that category. Pretty high peak rating. Um, okay, so rook d1, I like that move because it stops knight d4. Although, is knight d4 really a threat? Probably not. Because if knight d4, knight takes d4, bishop takes b7, I have knight takes e6. Still, though, I think rook d1 is a useful move. I could play bishop f4. Maybe maybe bishop f4 is worth thinking about. And then I could play rook a d1, perhaps. Huh. Yeah, let's play bishop f4. I changed my mind. I don't think I'll play bishop g5 at any time. I mean... I don't know. It's somewhat tempting in order to threaten, like, bishop takes f6 followed by knight e4, but I like bishop f4. It's, it suits the position better. We're focusing on the d6 square, which will work out well with a rook coming to the d file. So it's important to notice that nuance. Knight d4, knight takes d4, bishop takes g2 is meant by knight takes e6 in between move, and I win a pawn. We'll see what he does. I bet he plays rook c8. I think that would be the most normal move. And then I'll decide which rook I want to put on d1. He plays bishop e7. Okay, that, that looks pretty good too. Does the bishop can be exposed on c5? I might go a3 followed by b4. I think the f rook is more appropriate right now. So let's do that. So no more knight d4 to contest with. I'm very happy with this position. I like this for me. He's building a hedgehog structure. He's probably going to be playing pawn d6 after this. All right, so several things to consider now. Uh, bishop d6. Knight e5 looks pretty good. What else? Maybe rook d2, just doubling up. Those are my candidates. Bishop d6, knight e5, rook d2. Slight preference for knight e5 at the moment. It's a pretty forcing move, and it looks promising as well. Because he's still pinned on this bishop. So if knight e5, he'll probably play queen c8. 
Mm, could just be mass exchanges down the file, huh? Maybe rook d2 is better because that takes a nice proactive stance against him playing d6. I have ready-made pressure with rook a d1 coming. Yeah, I think rook d2. Bishop d6, I don't know about. I think that might be premature. I do get a nice square on d6 to work with, but I don't have to occupy that square yet to prove that I have it. So let's just do this. I'm x-raying his queen as well, and it makes sense to invite both rooks to the party. Rook a d1. He does play d6. Okay, I see no reason not to double. I guess he's going to play 98. But if 98, I might have 94. Depends. Uh, 94, just trying to win his d6 pawn. He has knight b4, queen b1. Hmm. Okay, well, my position is uh, wonderfully coordinated now, and it feels almost like I, ha I should have something. I can even play knight e5. Knight e5, he always plays queen c8, though, or queen c7 now. Be nice if I had a3 in, because if I had a3 included, then knight e4 would just, I think, outright win that pawn, practically. Hmm. I'm still thinking knight e4, because I like the look of knight e4, knight b4, queen b1. He can play bishop takes e4, queen takes b4, knight takes a2. I don't trust that line, though, for him. Yeah, there's, there's problems with that line. Knight e4 is the principled move. It just looks good, too. All right, let's do it. There's no other direct way to apply pressure to d6. This is the most efficient way to do it. So I've got four pieces bearing down on that square, and he only has three defenders at the moment. He could maybe advance the pawn d5. The idea there would be c takes d5, knight b4, forking my queen and the pawn on d5. I'm not overly concerned by that, though, because he'll still be caught on the d-file. I think this hedgehog attempt of his is a, a little slow. I would not have tried this. Maybe bishop e7 was a mistake, move 10. Maybe he should have played rook c8. Tried to operate with his bishop on c5. Yep, he plays that. I have to go here, because there's no other square that defends my knight. He could take on a2 right away, but I'll take on d6 if he does that. I mean, he'll be very hesitant to play bishop takes e4. I, I would not feel comfortable at all playing that move. Because after bishop takes e4, queen takes e4, knight takes a2, um, I have all these discoveries. Actually, knight g5 might just win an exchange right away. Because I'd be threatening mate, and my bishop would join the queen in attacking a8. Double attack. Notice how his knight blocks his other rook from defending a8. So taking on e4 just looks bad for him. So what does that leave him with? Stuff like d5, basically. d5, I can maybe play a3. Yeah. And his knight will be fumbling around for a square. I can also go d5, knight c3, but a3 looks pretty good. Could he go queen c8 then? Uh, no, but I have knight g5 as well. Nice. Okay, so one line that I just looked at there was d5, a3. And if knight c6, I can take on d5. So instead of knight c6, let's say he plays queen c7, trying to get out of the d-file pin so he can threaten to take on e4. But after queen c8, I have knight eg5 threatening mate. And I think I'll just win his knight, basically. 
Yeah, I think this works for me. I could go knight eg5 right away, but I think it's better to play a3. Because it's more of a hidden threat. Yeah, if the immediate knight eg5, he can defend with like knight f6, for instance. I mean, here I'm trying to get him to go back to c6 so I can just outright capture on d5 and win a pawn. So I think I'm winning material now. He really had trouble with the d-file in this one. The game is not over by any means, but <laughs> I, I think the opening battle has been decisively won by white. I'm happy with that rook d2 move on move 12. I think that was a good move. Pretty direct, and it worked. Double the rooks, knight e4. Yeah, I mean, he pretty much has to just give up a pawn now. But even that is not pleasant. Knight c6, c takes d5, e takes d5, rook takes d5. Queen c8 is forced then. There's so many good things there for white. I could even speculate with something like rook h5 in that position. Yeah, let's just take it. No use really thinking about anything else. Uh, knight eg5, now nah, let's take this. And he made the right call. He determined that um, yeah, he was pretty much losing otherwise. So, Okay, rook h5 is very interesting. Just threatening like knight d6. Because that that pawn on h7 is so vulnerable. Ah, rook h5, I also have bishop h3 as an idea. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is going to be a hard move to resist, guys. <laughs> I think I'm probably going to play it. Um, you know, queen, queen c8, he might be trying to come to e6 with this queen. Even that might run, might run into knight g5. I have half a mind to play rook c1, just so I can get the c and d file tandem pressure going against this queen. Hmm. What about rook h5, f5? Then I can play queen a2 check, let's say king g8, knight e g5, threats here. Yeah, these threats can build quickly. There's also knight fg5 in this position, threatening bishop h3, and also like some captures on h7. If I'm going to move a knight to g5, it's better to move the f knight, I think, because uh, if I move the e knight, he can simply play knight f6. But if I move the f knight, knight f6 is met by knight takes f6. So that's a nice bonus of that. Actually, knight fg5 looks very strong as well. Knight f g5. You can play that f5 move again. It's not pretty, but it might be near forced for him. Which is better, knight f g5 or rook h5? Rook h5, f5. Queen a2 check, king h8. I don't see a direct win there. Let's say knight fg5 in that position. Bishop takes, knight takes, knight f6. It's not yet winning. It's pretty close, though. I have knight f7 check, rook takes, queen takes, knight takes h5. And I think knight fg5 is a stronger move. Hmm. If knight fg5 h6, what am I going to do? Ah, just knight d6. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's do this one. It looks thematic. It looks really strong, too. I think it almost forces him to play f5 or g6. g6 looks like it could be disastrous, though, too. I love that both these moves, knight g5 and rook h5, enable bishop h3. 
because this this diagonal is more congested now, but bishop h3 is great because it could hit his queen. I don't see probably I'm spending a little bit too much time like deciding between good options. I should probably have just picked a move there and gone with it. Because my position is that good. I mean, time pressure will be my uh, biggest foe now. Yeah, so I think he has to play, well, maybe three options. Bishop takes g5, f5, or g6. I think everything else loses. Because my threat is knight d6, attacking his queen and threatening mate on h7. So let's run through those options. Uh, bishop takes g5, obviously I'm playing knight takes g5. Um, he can play knight f6 then, but I have bishop h3. That is practically winning, because if queen e8, I have bishop d7. Uh, maybe not quite winning. Maybe e2 hangs. Very good, though. Suffice it to say. Um, so f5, how will I respond to f5? f5, I have lots of options like queen a2, for instance, threatening discoveries. And then if king h8, maybe rook d7, f takes e4, knight f7 check. OK, he played g6, the move I hadn't got to yet. <laughs> OK, so now I have options like bishop h3, of course. Uh, taking on h7, which looks kind of complicated, but is possibly good, with some cool ideas like uh, knight takes h7, king takes h7, rook h5, check. But he can maybe play king g8. Might not be winning. So I'm thinking bishop h3 is what I should do. Yeah, bishop h3. Let's, let's do that. Forces him to play f5. And now if I play queen a2, he can he has to play king somewhere, g7 or h7. Let's do it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so king h8, let's say. I'm thinking I'll play rook d7. Because then if f takes e4, I have rook takes e7. So rook d7 with knight f7 check ideas. Also maybe knight e6. Yeah, let's do it. There's just so many pieces around his king, and his king is already so exposed to the elements. I'd be shocked if he can hold this position. Again, just got to watch my time. That's pretty much it. The knight f7 check is huge. That threat is impossible for him to cope with, almost. You guys have no idea how difficult it is not to make a dead man walking pun right now. <laughs> a very obvious pun. <laughs> Rook a7. It's creative. <laughs> well, I can just go knight f7 check. Yeah, knight f7, and if king g7, I have bishop h6 winning on the spot practically. So knight f7, he'll have to play rook takes and then queen takes. Yeah, that's over. If um, f takes e6, I have like rook takes e7 at the very least. Okay, Check. let's do it. I will pre-move this recapture. Because king g7 walks headlong into bishop h6 check. And that is going to win the house. King g8, knight d6 check.
game over. This also wins a lot of material too. Yeah, he takes there, but I have take on e7. Threatening his queen and also threatening queen takes h7 or queen f8. Just double checking. Yeah, this is more than sufficient. Yeah, he's allowing mate. Queen f8, or just, I guess I'll take the knight. Checkmate. Okay, so I went up to 2362 after that game. Um, let's take a look. This was a nice crisp game. I mean, it was one-sided and everything flowed very naturally in that one. So I played this knight f3 move on move 5. Um, honestly, I think black's best response in this position is c5. But you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> um, I just I just had the most difficult time proving an advantage against c5 in this position. So b6, g3, there's other moves for white too. Like I said, e4 is a principal try. But I like g3. I like this Fianchetto system. Bishop a6 I think is better because Bishop a6 uh, inconveniences white for a move. I have to defend my c4 pawn. If I go bishop g2, he can just take because knight e5 can be met by bishop d5, defending his rook in the corner, and also saving his bishop. So that's my only misgiving about this variation. Um, yeah, after after bishop a6, I would have to play something like b3. He might even have knight e4, but I think I've looked at this before. I can, I can go bishop d2 or something. But, um, you know, this is, this is better than bishop e7, I think. Um, so bishop e7, bishop g2, c5, take. Yeah, so if I were just a castle here, he can take on d4. And the exchange of the light square bishops is really a buzzkill in the position. I mean, it pretty much deadens any chances white has for an advantage. Um, often they'll go queen c8, queen b7 check after that. So I'm not a big fan of this approach. So that's why I took on c5. He took back with his bishop, I castled, he played knight c6, and then bishop f4. Yeah, so bishop e7 itself might be okay, but I think his whole strategy was faulty starting here. Um, let's just flick on the engine. I thought rook c8 is what he should do. The engine thinks he should break in the center with d5. Okay. Yeah, I seem to get nice pressure, though, on his pawn if he does that. And there's still some question marks in this position, I think. I could take first, too, if I wanted. Hmm. Computer thinks he can potentially equalize that way, though. Yeah, because after this, the play looks very simple for white. e4, not a move I considered. Okay, I didn't think about that. I was thinking about knight e5, uh, rook d2, and also there was some other move, wasn't there? Bishop d6, that was it, yeah. Um, I think knight e5, though, can always be effectively met by queen c8. Getting his queen off the c-file and just hoping for exchanges, basically. And these exchanges bring him closer to just dead equality. Bishop d6, likewise, I, I, I own that d6 square right now, so I don't have to go into it. I don't have to jump in to prove that I own it. That's like a useful piece of advice. Like if you If you know you have strong control over a square, you don't necessarily have to occupy that square. In a lot of cases, it's better not to. I know I'm generalizing, but um, that was kind of a, a pivotal thing in my chess understanding when I realized that. Yeah, the, the computer really likes this e4 move. I guess the idea is just e5, trying to cramp his knight. And that totally shuts down d6. He's not going to play d6 when e5 is uh, staring him down the barrel. Yeah, he, can't, he can't take on e5 now because of the x-ray on his queen. So this would be bad. E4. Well, I'll have to remember that. Somehow, like, moving the e-pawn doesn't come natural to me because of my bishop on g2. I think, oh, I have this bishop. i got to keep its diagonal open. But it's not always the case. So the engine thinks he should 
play actively to attack c4 by starting with knight a5 or rook c8. Let's say knight a5, it looks more forcing. Then b3, then rook c8. Let's say I just double up as planned. b5, ah, okay. So leave the pawn on d7. Don't put it on d6 where it has potential to just become a weakness. Yeah, and then strike on the flank. Yeah, that looks like a good approach. Black is completely fine here, probably better, because my C pawn is getting exchanged. And he has pressure down the C file. Yeah, so that rook C8 move, I mentioned it earlier. I thought that was key for him. I don't think he should put the pawn on D6. Now huge advantage for white. Knight E8, Knight E4, Knight B4, Queen B1. Yep, and the engine confirms, but for better or for worse, he must play bishop takes e4. I don't know what I would do if I were in his shoes, because this is a really tough position. Um, I mean, the way the game played out, yeah, he should play bishop takes e4 in, in hindsight, but that's it's just an ugly move to have to make, giving up your gorgeous light square bishop, giving white the bishop pair, and you don't really have time to take a2 because of... Uh, I was thinking this knight g5 move, but I guess knight d4 is good too. Attacking the rook and also getting knight c6 in. So, yeah. In the game, he plays d5, but after a3, yeah, the position is almost beyond hope for him. Interestingly, the computer says his best try is this. But I was planning this move in reply. Doesn't that just win a piece? Because, again, I have the mate threat, and I'm threatening his knight. Yeah, it does win a piece. Knight f6, just take it. That's telling how tough his position is here, that the computer's best line, queen c8, or at least it was queen c8, is rated higher than what he did, which on the surface only loses a pawn. <laughs> but it unleashes like all of white's attacking potential. Ah, so here it is saying knight eg5 is better, but I bet knight fg5 is good too. Why does it like knight eg5, even though it allows knight f6? Ah. Oh, I can just play bishop h3. No f5 anymore. And if he runs to d7, then I have the exquisite move bishop d7. Uh huh. And this knight is overloaded. You know, it would love to take the bishop, but it can't because that's the sole defender of h7. Then you have to go to d8, and I just like take c6, and it's just a massacre. Aha! Uh -huh. So for all of my elaborations about the difference between knight eg5 and knight fg5, it actually looks like knight eg5 is even better. You have to play bishop takes, and then knight takes. Okay, that could transpose. Knight f6, rook d7. Yeah, I, it's interesting that I can use this d7 square with impudence, because he can just never take it with his knight. And I assume if h6, I'm going to play rook c7 in this position. Hitting his queen, attacking the bishop if the queen moves. Yeah, bad news for him. Very bad. So, anyways, knight fg5 is probably sufficient to win the game. Definitely sufficient to win the game. Yeah, none of these alternatives seem to, to hold. I mean, bishop takes g5, you saw what happens. Uh, if f5... Um, what was I thinking about after f5? I don't think it was bishop h3. I think I was thinking queen a2. Queen a2, king h8. Maybe something similar. Rook d7. Yeah, because if fe4, this is very much like the game. I know my bishop's not on h3, but I'm attacking e7. His, his queen is cut off from the defense of his king. Yeah, he's probably just uh, losing material in this position. If this, I have this move, even. Can go pick up the bishop if his queen runs away. Too much. Too much firepower. So, he played g6, but then bishop h3. This is all pretty forced. f5, queen a2, yep. Engine approves. King h8. He could go knight b4, I guess double attacking uh, the queen and the rook. And I can't do a discovery because I would lose my queen. But after a takes b4, bishop takes d5, queen Check. takes d5, I've won two minors, and yeah, he's he's pretty much done for. Very similar Check. reason to the game. So just nothing works. I mean, it's amazing how 
when you're attacking, things just tend to come together for you if you're attacking in the correct way. That's what I love about chess. Like, Check. It just feels so, so harmonious sometimes when you play a game like this. It's just, um, it makes the game worth playing. And it's uh, it's hopeless for him in this position. You can only stave off mate for a matter of moves. Check mate. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this game. And I'll be back tomorrow with another 15-minute game. And please leave me your feedback in the comments if you have it. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.